Sawyer and Shane, thank you for joining me. Today I am making some soap on a rope and given that Father's Day is coming up very soon I am choosing to use a more masculine smell and I'm using bergamot and tobacco which I renamed Country Gent. It has notes of bergamot, lemon, tobacco leaf, cinnamon, patchouli and sandalwood and it is a really nice fragrance. Now I want my soap and the rope to be a little bit more chunkier than what I offer in my other soap range. So I have gone back to my original soap making molds which I purchased when I first learnt how to make soap and these can be got off of eBay. When I make these soaps I want them to be the width of this mold which is about 6.8 centimetres. I want them to be 4 centimetres wide and I want them for 5 centimetres high. So what I've done is I've mixed some rubbing alcohol and mica together and then I've painted lines on here so I know where the cut lines are going to be of my soap so I can line the ropes up and on the inside of the mould just down the bottom here I've, poured, uh, I've marked off my pore line as well. Now to work out how much oil I needed to only fill these soap moulds up to um, that 5 centimetre line um, there is a really great article on the Modern Soap Making website which I'll leave a link to down in the description box and she explains how to work out how much oil you need to fill any rectangular or square shaped mould and um, she tells you how to do it in both metric and imperial. So I worked out how much oil I needed to fill them and then I've run it through soap calc to work out how much lye I needed and I did do it a little bit more to make sure that I'm not caught short and I will pull then some samplers as well. So let's go ahead and get started and make this soap on a rope. Okay so in my bucket here I have my oils and in my smaller bucket here I have my lye water which I have dissolved some tussar silk into. I'm going to pour the lye water into my oils. I'm going to mix it up and then I'm going to split it out for the colour and we're going to do a simple drop swirl. So for my colours today I have a little bit of activated charcoal which I'm going to pop into this jug that has slightly less of the soap butter. So I also have a little bit of Tutti Frutti from My Micro Obsession and that's going to go into this other bucket here. And then into my big bucket, even though this um, bergamot and tobacco does not have any vanillin in it, I am going to put a little bit of grandeur mica in. So we have a, a slightly gold base and I'm going to pop that one in there. Just pop a little bit more. And then I'm going to mix these up before stirring in the fragrance and then we'll get to pouring. Okay, so I'm thinking that this um, tutti frutti colour is a little bit darker, uh, sorry, a little bit brighter than what I was aiming for. So I'm just going to add in just a small amount of elusive marker and just try and tone that down a little bit. I really like the tutti frutti, but I just feel it's going to be a little bit too bright for this particular fragrance. So I'm just going to, seeing as this fragrance oil has actually really thinned my soap batter out, I'm going to stick blend that in. Oh yes, I feel that that has given me a much nicer colour. So we're going to go and grab those moulds and we're going to start pouring this in. Okay, so I'm going to start by pouring my gold in and then I'm going to drop swirl in the other colours. Okay, 
Okay, so we're going to have a change of plan. This bergamot and tobacco obviously plays quite nicely and then it starts to really set up quite thick and this black has gone very thick on me. So we are now going for that kind of clip plop sort of um, soaping look and then I might just put a chopstick or a hanger through it to really get those colours to blend together. soap has obviously gone horribly wrong with how fast that accelerated on me. It was very deceitful because it looked like it was going to play really nicely and then all of a sudden I just had solid soap in the pot. But you know what, that's not too bad because I want my soap to be fairly solid so I can put these um, little ropes in them and that they I know they're going to hold whereas if my soap was too soft I'm not going to be able to do that. It's also given a really nice texture to the top of this soap so I'm not too bothered about that it was just quite comical to try and get all of that in here it probably is a little bit too hard for um, for the soap so I'm gonna have to have a little bit of a play and knock it down a bit more but you know what that seems to be holding up quite well so I'm gonna push my soap my ropes in here now the rope that I'm using I actually got from the hardware store because I do feel that the soap or the rope that you pay for from the soap making stores is actually quite expensive and it's no different to what you buy from your local hardware store. This particular rope that I'm using, it's quite a soft rope. It's not cotton, but it is mildew resistant, rot resistant and weather resistant. So I figure that means you're going to be able to put it into the shower and you're not going to get um, mildew or mold growing on the ropes which is an added bonus. So these ropes are actually sticking quite nicely in here um, because of how solid the soap has gone. I'm just trying to line it up so it's in the center of the mold and in the center of um, my two lines here. Once I have got all of these filled, I'm going to have to give these molds another really good whack down to make sure that there are no air bubbles. Now something else that I have learnt during my time in soap making is that when you do end up with a soap that accelerates like this and you're trying to achieve something in the middle, um, sometimes it is also best to wait a little while depending upon how fast your soap is actually setting up will depend how long you have to wait. But if your soap is going to go through gel phase, and I usually find that if my soap has accelerated like this, it will go through a gel phase. Once it gets to a certain point in that gel phase, all of a sudden the soap becomes that little bit more fluid and you are able to do a little bit more to the soap. So once it gets into that sort of gel phase, um, I'll make sure that there are no air pockets around these ropes that I'm putting in here. In fact, I can feel this one starting to release the soap a little bit more so it's not quite as hard to push that in. I'm trying to push them so they go far enough down that they don't come out the bottom of the soap, but so that they are also far enough down that they don't fall out after a couple of washes as well. So I kind of want the knot of my soap kind of in the middle really.
going to stop playing with these now. I'm actually really liking the rough texture of the top of them and I think that kind of suits my theme really well. I'm dying to see what they are going to look like on the out inside. I have a feeling I'm going to be able to be able to come back and cut these in about 15 to 18 hours time because I can feel that they are already starting to warm up so they'll go through a gel phase and then we'll have a look and see what we've got on the inside of these soap on a rope. Hey everyone, I am back to cut this bergamot and tobacco soap on a rope. Now, this soap basically, if it could go wrong, it has gone wrong. I have got soda ash on the top and the top is looking quite rough, but I'm thinking once this has um, cured out a little bit, I'm going to give it a wash to really brighten it up. Um, and it still feels like it's going to be a nice bar of soap. It smells really nice as well. So I think next time I try this fragrance, I am going to use a much higher water discount on it. I'm just going to loosen this bolt on here. Today I am using my single bar cutter from Pure Delight Soap Cutting. And I'll just move that one back and hopefully that will give me the full amount. Now when I took this out of the mould, it's going to be hard to see on the camera, but I did put little knife marks of where I need to be cutting this one. So I'm going to pop this down onto my cutter here. I have made allowances for some sample cuts from off the end here. So I'll take this piece off first and then we will go in for the full bar. So let's move this one along make sure those ropes are out the way I'll just bring it across to that line and I'm going to go straight down and here is the inside of the soap so you can see it's a much chunkier um, bar of soap but because I have actually designed this with men in mind I think that's going to fit quite nicely in their hand and then it can also hang up in the shower to make sure that it dries out nicely. It is always a good idea to keep your soaps in a dry area so if you've got a soap dish uh, make sure it's got some drain holes in the bottom so it doesn't end up sitting in the water. This can actually soften the soap and then shorten the amount of um, life that you get out of it in the shower and it's also what leads them to go soggy uh, so if you can keep your bar of soap nice and dry um, it will last so much longer so having them on this rope is going to be really handy so here is another piece so even though this looked like it was going to turn into an absolute disaster and I do have a few little air pockets there I think it's going to be a really nice bar of soap to use so I am actually quite happy with it um, I will try this fragrance oil again but I will use a higher um, a higher water discount I had about 33% so next time I'm going to use that full one of 38 and see if I can get a nicer swirl going through it but at the end of the day, it is still soap and it can still be used. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me make my soap on a rope. I will try again and try and do a, um, a video that just doesn't go completely wrong on me. If you did enjoy watching me make my soap on a rope, please leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. And I will get back to you with any questions as soon as I can. I do bring out weekly videos on soap making and bath and body products so if you would like to be notified the next time a video comes out hit that subscribe button and the little bell and it will let you know. So until next week have a great one. Bye.